their respects to his son, Bo Biden, who died of brain cancer last week. You can really see the emotion and the pain on the Biden family's faces as they arrived to these ceremonies. Uh, this is the second day of three days worth of ceremonies. President Obama will deliver a eulogy at a funeral mass tomorrow. Minnesota is filing criminal charges against the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis over the way it handled clergy sex abuse claims. I'm Evan Haining. My name is Amanda Clark. I am a breakfast defector. I am reaching out to anyone trapped in their AM routine. We'll be at Taco Bell every morning starting at 7 a.m. Say no to breakfast blandwiches. There's something tastier out there, like the sausage AM crunch wrap, juicy sausage, eggs, and a crispy hash brown inside a grilled tortilla. If your mouth is watering, don't resist. Join us. Defect to the next generation of breakfast at Taco Bell. Wake up, live moss at participating locations. How fast are new Allegra gel caps? I didn't know you got a cat fast. How strong are new Allegra gel caps? Ten more logs to go strong. Non-drowsy Allegra gives you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin, and stays strong for 24 hours. New Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster. Nothing's stronger. Among OTC oral antihistamines, refers to first dose only. Starts working in one hour. Use only as directed. Visit Allegra.com. Good afternoon. It's 12.02. I'm Di Rice with the latest in live local news here only on KCAA 1050 AM. A jury has found David Olvera, 28, of Yucaipa and Emilio Saldana, 25, of Cala Mesa, both guilty of first-degree murder. Another jury found Amory Hillrich, 42, of Yucaipa, also guilty of first-degree murder. John and Amy Hillrich were married, but they had been separated for years. They shared custody of their two young children and maintained a family home in Yucaipa. According to Deputy District Attorney who prosecuted the case, Amy asked her boyfriend, David Olvera, to kill her husband because she felt he was making her life difficult over concerns he had about her relationship with Olvera. Olvera was a parolee who was, according to their children, had been spending a lot of time in the house. John Hillrich, 39, was shot and killed August 15, 2011, in the parking structure outside his Ontario office. Amy Hillrich faces 26 years to life in state prison, and Alvera and Saldana each face 51 years to life in state prison. All three defendants are scheduled to be sentenced July 16th in Rancho Cucamonga Superior Court. And early yesterday morning at about 2, sheriff deputies responded to the report of a shot of a gun being fired in the apartment complex of 674 West 41st Street in the northern portion of San Bernardino. Upon arrival, deputies were directed to an upstairs apartment where the gun was believed to have been fired. The suspect, 22-year-old Austin Washington, was discovered to have recently been released from jail and was on active parole or active felony probation for a prior weapons violation. As a result, deputies conducted a probation search of Washington's residence and located two fully loaded and functional semi-automatic 9mm handguns. Deputies also located a bullet hole in an exterior wall and followed it to an occupied ground floor apartment directly below Washington's. Nobody, fortunately, was injured and Washington was arrested. Inland Empire weathers little bit sunny out there, but mostly cloudy. Highs near 73. Tomorrow we're warming up to about 78. Sunday's high 86. Currently 69 here in San Bernardino. Looking at your drive. Disabled vehicle on the westbound 210 at Milliken. Right there at the 60. You've got two lanes blocked in that area. So uh, be very careful. A car had stalled and has since been moved out of the lanes, but uh, you still have a little bit of backup there. And then through Ontario on the 15 northbound between Highway 60 and Harupa, that normal slow and go thing around there. So beware of that. Take your time. Drive carefully. Happy Friday. This is the station that leaves no listener behind. KCAA 1050 AM. 
Leading with over 10 million searches, Caitlyn Jenner, formerly known as Bruce Jenner, lit social media on fire after the July cover of Vanity Fair hit the internet with Caitlyn on the cover. The hashtag Call Me Caitlyn had over 144,835 mentions by 4.30 p.m. on Monday. Jenner's Twitter handle also broke the Guinness World Records mark for the fastest Twitter handle to reach 1 million followers. Also trending with over 1 million searches, Bethesda Softworks unveiled the first official trailer for the highly anticipated game Fallout 4. Gamers are looking forward to the actual game release date, which is expected to be late 2015. And 2016 Coachella pre-sale tickets have already gone on sale. And get this, general admission tickets are $375 and VIP tickets are $899. This had over 200,000 searches. I'm Successful Brim with What's Trending This Week on KCAA 1050, the station that leaves no listener behind. Character, your work ethic. You've got to be on the same page. Today we're calling to let you know we are debt free, house and everything. You have done really, really, really good. And you're not going to quit now. It's been a huge witness for us to be able to share that. It was time to get serious. Intentionality, people. Celebrate the success. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. This is your show, America. If I knew at 22 what I know now, our life would be better off. It's the show that's changing the world. Now you don't just listen to the show, you live it. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Dave Ramsey Show. Where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is your show. Thank you for calling in. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Austin is in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, Austin, how are you? I'm good, Dave. Man, are you uh, better than you deserve? I am, sir. How can I help? Uh, well, Dave, I am a uh, 24-year-old. Uh, I just graduated bartending school. Um, I've worked several different jobs in my life, but uh, I'm trying to go back to school. Uh, right now, I am looking for a job, and I want some advice from uh, some of your famous wisdom, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> okay. You're looking for a job since you just graduated in bartending, right? Correct. Yeah, it's harder than I thought to find a job bartending. Uh, it, I've, I've applied for God knows how many places. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, I used to do, I've worked for Apple, I've worked for 18 I've worked for a lot of different companies. Now, they don't have bars, um, though. You're you're applying at bars, yeah. right? <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Okay. And now, is that what you're asking me about, is how to get a job at a bar? Yes. How many and personal general, interviews have you had after these applications? None. I have been putting applications online. I've called the places. I've gone up and talked to the people in person. Um and uh, it, it's it's a struggle, man. Because uh, my goal is to do it to get back into college. Um, I refuse to do student loans. Mm -hmm. um, I've paid for college before, just kind of, and I haven't finished yet. I took a break, but I've always paid as I went along, which is not fun. Let me be honest with you on that. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's a pain, but it's better than student loans. Um, yeah. Okay. What are you What are you using for food money now? How do you make a living to eat? Well, for the last couple, I saved up some, the job I had before um, I went to bartending school was a travel job. They laid us all off, basically, but um, I saved up enough money to kind of live, but I'm, you know, slowly getting down to my last dime. How much money do um, you have I, left? Uh, <laughs> that's what I want to say, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, I'm getting pretty low. I recently moved back to my parents' home to uh get myself together basically i was engaged at one time and it didn't work out so they told me said you know come home save some money try and you know get yourself back together so okay i'm gonna cr cross road when you met these line. people what was your appearance um is your appearance well, off-putting i hope not i wore slacks and a nice dress shirt didn't wear a tie um they went over that in the bartending school. Yeah, most said, of the time, you know, I don't think I've ever met a bartender with a tie, so that's cool. But uh, <laughs> but I'm talking about, I mean, you know, your uh, uh, hair, uh, your beard, you know, those kinds of like dress for success when you're going to an interview kind of thing. I don't want you to overdress, but I just, I'm wondering if they're seeing something. I mean, you got a Mike Tyson tattoo around your eye. I mean, what's... <laughs> no. Uh, 
clean shaven. Uh, I usually I keep my hair cut and okay. trimmed up. All right, so we know it's um, not that then. You're pleasant to talk to. You're articulate. I've been talking to you, so you're not you're not putting in a weird <laughs> vibe off over the radio here. So that's good. So we know it's not that. You took a bath before you went and brushed your teeth and all that, right? Yeah. yeah so uh, yeah. so it's not that. Uh, so maybe it's the approach. I don't know. I'll, I'll give you an idea to try. And I don't know that it's like magic. It's not like some kind of this This will work, try it every time. It, it's not that. But it's an idea. And I've seen it work a few times. I'd pick the top five most expensive bars in the city. Okay. And I would offer, I, I would go in and uh, hang out and say, I really need to meet the manager for two minutes. I want two minutes of his time. That's all I want, just two minutes. And say, I, I want to make you the strangest offer, sir, you've ever had in your life. I just finished bartending school, and I think I know what I'm doing, and they think I'm the way I'm doing. I got this silly little pl this silly little plaque here that says I do, but I want to come in here for the next two weeks every single night, and I want to work for free. And I want to prove to you that I'm the best thing on the planet when it comes to bartending. I'm going to work my butt off, and I'm going to make myself so valuable that you will have to hire me. And I, I, I'll, I like sign, I'll sign a waiver, liability waiver. You don't, I'm not going to fall and then sue you or something like that. I'll wash the glasses. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of the other bartenders. I'm not going to be a threat to them. I'll just cover when you're busy, and I'm going to be the most pleasant person you've ever been around. And I'm going to make myself so valuable that you can't get rid of me. And just like that. out of five of them, one of them will go, well, yeah, kid, you're crazy, but we'll try it free. I mean, and it might work. It might land. You might get your foot in the door and you might land a job as long as you don't have other personality quirks or appearance things or something that are throwing this whole thing off. And I don't think you do based on our discussion <laughs> here. Not. Well, I mean, I'm just being blunt because, I mean, I've had people yeah. come in here with their pants around their ankles looking for a dadgum job. I mean, if you're going to come in here, you need to wear a belt. <laughs> You know, yeah, and so yeah. Uh, this isn't a rap group. You know, we're a financial organization. So, um, you know, you just have to use some dadgum good sense when you're doing this stuff. And sometimes people do, and sometimes they don't. So, if you're going in there dressed appropriately and an appropriate appearance to go into a high class, nice bar in Little Rock, Arkansas, and you can talk the lingo, and you can make the drinks, and you can bust yeah. the tables, and you know what to do, and you're going to be smiling, and you're going to be stepping and fetching, and you're going to be hustling, and you're going to make that guy go, man, this is the best guy I've ever seen in my life. i got to hire him. Try it. I like it, yeah. Call me back and I tell me if it works. I will. I definitely will, Dave. That's actually the best advice I've gotten so far. <laughs> yeah. But go in person. And listen, applying for jobs online, this is for everybody out there, it's a complete waste of time. Nobody really? gets hired online. It's a complete waste. There's a bazillion people apply for a bazillion things online, and, and it just doesn't work. It's a personal contact. Hey, do you know anybody working at any of those hotels or restaurants or bars? Uh, I knew a girl that worked at a local place downtown, but even then, uh, she's part-time, and I've, I've kind of been begging her to put in good word for me. No, I don't but... want to put in good word for you. I want her to just set up a chance for you to talk to somebody. I don't want her to give you a referral. Just, I mean, even if your mother uh, plays bridge with a guy, with, with a guy who's, or, or with a gal whose son works at one of these places. I mean, even it could be a six to six degrees of separation thing. But if you know a single person, you can mention their name. Go, you know, my mom knows John over here, and uh, or John's friend over. Here. You know, John, my mom plays bridge with John's mother, or John. That kind of thing. I don't care what it is, but something to where there's some kind of point of connectivity, and you're not just Austin off the street. You know? Yeah. And, and that helps too, uh, because the online application thing is a complete freaking waste of time. You can fill out seven thousand applications, you'll never get a job. Because no one just reads your resume and your application online and we go, oh, that's it. We were looking for him. Out of the 73,000 people that applied for this, he's the one. That never happens, okay? It just doesn't. And it, it is a thing of who you know. Not like it's a good old boys club, but just somebody knows somebody. I mean, sometimes my wife is over at the Y with this running herd that she runs with, and one of them knows somebody's kid that knows somebody's kid that wants to come to work over here. And that at least gets their name out of the pile of dadgum applications. Doesn't mean we're going to hire them, but at least we give them a look then. Uh, we may give them a look and say no, but at least we give them a look. And, you know, that that's, you know, some kind of a connectivity point is very helpful. Not because it gets you the job, it just gets you a hearing for the job but online apps you just get buried in a pile man so it's a people business that you're in when you're trying to get hired this is the dave ramsey show hey you yeah you do you know where you are 
Well, you've done it now. You're listening to KCAA Loma Linda, your CNBC news station. So expect the unexpected. is KCAA. Do you have to ride the bus or depend on someone else for a ride? Is your current car giving you problems or just getting too old? Nearly everybody needs a car, but most people don't have enough money lying around. That's where car financing from Credit Yes comes in. For over a decade, Credit Yes has helped millions of people get the auto loan that's right for them. We want to help you too, and for free. Whether you have bad credit, no credit, or even gone through bankruptcy, we could help you get a car loan. We believe that everyone deserves a second chance. If you call right now, we could find you the right financing option, no matter your credit history. 855-669-7131. Every call is absolutely free and there's no obligation, meaning there's nothing to lose. Now is the time and it's probably not always going to be this easy. We even have programs that may allow you to put zero money down. Don't wait any longer to get the car you need no matter your credit history. Call Credit Yes for free right now. 855-669-7131. That's 855-669-7131. One last time, 855-669-7131. If you can't seem to stay ahead of your bills, then this message is for you. How would you like to have a large portion of your credit card debt, medical bills, and department store debt forgiven? National Credit Card Relief would like to give you free information on a proven debt forgiveness program. This program has been used by thousands to legally forgive millions in unsecured debt. It's not bankruptcy. It's not consolidation. This special program actually wipes clean the portion of your debt that is forgiven from what you owe your creditors. Call for free information and get all your questions answered in the first free call. The more you owe, the more you can save. If you have at least $10,000 or more in credit card bills, this debt forgiveness program can be very effective. Call for free information and find out more now. 800-546-2909. There is no cost or obligation for the information. Don't wait. Call 800-546-2909. That's 800-546-2909. Get your debt problem solved. Call 800-546-2909 today. Discover the wonders from the land down under at the Australian Outback San Diego Zoo's latest exhibit. Here you'll encounter wombats, wallabies, kookaburras, cockatoos, and koalas. You'll be at eye level with seven different marsupials, and you may even encounter koala joeys on their mom's backs. San Diego Zoo's Australian Outback is also home to 25 colorful bird species. Watch these beautiful creatures in the land down under. The new Australian Outback at San Diego Zoo. For more information, go to San Diego DiegoZoo.org. What is the Dell Wamsley Radio Show? Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. You need to stop being dependent on a paycheck. All of these self-help motivational people, they wind you up like a little clock. Click, 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 and then they let you go. Boom. Who is the show about? I'm your host, Dell Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Learn the secrets of building wealth from Dell Walmsley. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to noon, right here on KCAA. If you like jazz, you'll enjoy getting together with me. I'm Tommy Hawkins, a jazz hawk. Tune in to my show, Just Jazz, Saturday nights from 10 to midnight on KCAA 1050 a.m. I need somebody Help Not just anybody Help You know I need someone Help When, when I was younger when So I much was younger, younger than today Joining us, America. We're so glad you're with us. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Chris is with us in Augusta, Georgia. Hi, Chris. How are you? Doing well, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, um, you know, I've I've been living on a written plan here for probably the past six six months or so, and you know, I, I budget money out of every paycheck to give, and um, 
I recently gave money to a friend. A friend of mine asked to borrow a little bit of money, and I said, I won't loan it to you, but I will give it to you. And um, they said they didn't want it if they couldn't pay it back or anything. And I said, you know, I'm more than happy to give it to you. I know you need it. So I just kind of slipped the money under their door when they weren't at home, and they got really offended, and now they won't speak to me. And I was really kind of confused by that, and I was wondering how I should kind of handle that situation. Hmm. I, I, I think they have a problem. I mean, you're trying to do something nice, and now they're offended and won't speak to you. I mean, were they four years old? Well, this I is, wonder. Yeah, this is this is kind of ridiculous. Unless there's more to this story, there may be background on this friendship or something that plays into this interplay. But just the simple act of no, I you know I don't want to take it unless I have to unless I pay it back. And then you slip it under the door. I would have just brought it back to you and said, "Dude, I said no, okay." But uh, yeah. I mean, if he really wants to take that stand, but now I'm offended and I won't speak to you because you tried to help me. I mean, that's just whacked. So I think that's on them. You know, uh, now I, I would I would say that in the future, if someone says that, I would just abide by their wishes. Okay, I'm not going to try to force someone to take a gift from me, but um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's kind of like you're arguing over the the bill when you go out to eat with some friends or something. You know, it's like, well, I'm gonna pick it up. No, I'm gonna pick it up. No, I'm gonna pick it up. And you know, then you try to play the game of who gets up from the uh, the, the 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 table the fastest and goes and finds the waiter and pays the bill prepays it before it comes to the table and you know you just getting this this whole gamesmanship trying to pay the stinking bill for somebody yeah you know and all this stuff and I get into those things occasionally it's kind of funny but um but you know and finally I just say okay thank you thank you for dinner and let them buy yeah. you know and I'll buy next time or whatever um but I, I you know where if I'm got a situation like that I just say listen I'm on, on, as a matter of principle, I'm against debt, and yeah, I don't and, want. And, I'm sorry, and that's exactly what I said. You know, I, I don't want to ruin this friendship. I don't want to create that master servant dynamic. And I mean, it feels good to give. It's like you say, it's the most fun you'll ever have with money. Yeah, and yeah. how old is the person that did this? Uh, twenty-two. Oh, and yeah, I'll be, that's, I'll be twenty-three later this yeah, week. So. That's just they're just being they're just being immature. That's all oh. it is. And so, um, you know, what I do is I just call them and apologize. Okay. And just say, I'm sorry. You told me not to give it to you. I, I was just trying to help. I'm so sorry. Okay. And just, it doesn't hurt anything. And then, um, and they gave the money back already or? No, they, they still have. Oh, I, they I kept really, the I money mean, and know, they're they, mad. They said they wanted to. I just haven't seen them, so. Oh, okay. Well, I'll take it back and I'll give it to somebody else. I mean, it's, I'm just sorry. I thought I, I was trying to do something good and I didn't want to mess up our friendship and now I did anyway. And I'm sorry. I didn't want to do that. So I'll take the money back. It's fine. I'll give it to somebody else. It's not a big deal. And, okay. you know, uh, but then you just got to know you're dealing with a very immature person from this point forward, um, you know, and, and so forth. But in general, I just try to respect someone's wishes on that. If they say if they really mean it and this guy obviously did that, I don't want the money unless I can pay it back. Then you go, OK, well, we're we've got a problem here because I will not loan it to you. Yeah. So the only way I'll do this, I'm more than happy to give it to you, but if you won't receive it that way, then the conversation's over, and hey, I wish you luck, and I know you need it, I'm willing to help you, but I understand, and I'm going to respect your wishes, and you have to respect the fact that I don't do loans, and so that's where we are. Okay. And uh, do it that way. Good question, man. Thank you for calling. Open phones this hour at 888 One of the things I talk about in the new book, the Legacy Journey. I call it the new book because it's the last book I did. It came out actually November of last year. It's a book about wealth, not about money. There's a difference. It's God's view of wealth, not God's view of money. Money's transactional. Money's for used for buying food and helping others and that kind of stuff. But wealth is a different thing than money. Uh, wealth is a bigger picture, more philosophical discussion. And The Legacy Journey is about God's view of wealth. And in that book, I talk a lot about generosity. As a matter of fact, I talk a lot about outrageous generosity. And I was listening to my friend Craig Groeschel the other day on our, one of our podcasts. Chris Brown, one of our guys here, does a leadership podcast called the, for, for church leaders called the uh, Momentum Leadership Podcast. By the way, you can listen to it. Craig Groeschel was on it. Robert Morris was on it just the other day, and you can listen to it by going to stewardshipcentral.org and downloading the podcast. And, by the way, Chris Brown, by the way, is, is coming out with a new radio show on Christian Radio, 20 cities plus a podcast, what the Bible says about money, 30 minutes every day, five days a week, and that comes out June 1 in just a few weeks, so be watching for that. Chris is one of our MC personalities. I'm really excited for him, for this project, and, and uh, to have a whole whole 
you know, megaphone out there about what the Bible says about money on Christian radio. But anyway, in listening with Craig the other day, I and Robert, they both are, are really have really good sayings and really good philosophy on generosity. And I've picked up a couple of things uh, listening to those two podcasts lately uh, that I would add to where I rewriting. I won't be doing it, but where I rewriting uh, the legacy journey. You know, the, the Bible says don't let the right hand know what the left hand is doing. And so give anonymously, in other words. And the vast majority of the giving that we do as the Ramsey family is is anonymous. You, you don't know where it is and it's none of your business because it doesn't have anything to do with you. And it's God giving it anyway. He's just using me to do it. So I'm staying out of the way. It, it's anonymous. Uh, and, and I'm really kind of a freak about that. I work really, really hard for the uh, the ministry that we give the money to to not use us to uh, not 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 try to give us some kind of ego feedback for having given the money because we don't consider it our money. We consider it God's money that we just gave them. And so uh, we work really hard about that anonymity thing and staying off the thing. But I, I think I've made a mistake on some of that. So I think uh, some things giving ought to be done anonymously. And there's other times that giving, and Craig Groeschel brought this up the other, the other day, when you're in a leadership position of some kind, and I am, especially in this money space, uh, if you're pastoring a church, you are. If you're a leader in the community and you're known, you are in a leadership position. You operate a big company in your community. Then you're in a leadership position in that community by definition, even if you didn't sign up for it. You don't have to be in the Chamber of Commerce. You just you, you just are known as being... This lady owns a big company in our area, you know, that kind of a thing. Then you have the opportunity to do giving that's not anonymous to model for others what proper giving looks like. You get the opportunity to share with others what giving looks like by the way you do it publicly. And, and thereby inspiring others, the Bible says, to good works. And so you're doing good works where people can see them to inspire others to good works. Um, you have to be very careful with that one because you can really go past the humility mark there and go over into the pride mark and where you're saying, look at me, look at me, what I'm doing. And that's very dangerous stuff in, in, your, in the generosity space of your brain. So you want to be doing generosity because it changes you into a generous person, not because you're feeding your ego. But there are times that you're modeling and you're showing others that by following these financial peace principles, by following the baby steps, by getting out of debt and being on a budget and living on less than I make, I've been able to build a level of wealth with money. And, and you have too. And you have the chance to say, hey, this stuff works, and therefore I'm able to, God's able to use me to uh, cause this ministry to be funded to cause this to happen. You don't always have to mention amounts, but you need to model that you're out there in the community giving. Because if you're looked up to, that causes people that look up to you to want to be givers too. And you are, are spurring generosity on. Versus, I know people who give a lot, and some of you think they don't give anything. But I happen to know their deal, because I'm on the inside of their deal. And so, you know, like I know one guy worth $2 billion, and I know he gave away almost $400 million last year, and nobody knows it. Because he doesn't care what you think, for one thing. But he's missing the opportunity to model for others that idea that, hey, when you get to be a billionaire, you can have $400 million a year? You know what you can Oh, my goodness. Wow. How that would inspire some others to want to become a billionaire so that they could do that. Well, I think it might. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. CAA. California headline news. State officials taking a closer look at that oil spill in Santa Barbara to determine if charges should be filed. Investigators say the pipeline was badly corroded. In some sections, over half of the original pipe wall thickness gone. Now, California Attorney General Kamala Harris, as a pipeline owner, could face criminal charges. She has teams of lawyers and investigators looking into possible charges against the owner, Plains All-American Pipeline. Correspondent Alex Stone, graduation night at Northridge Academy High School, but many families who should have been celebrating inside were locked outside. They said we're at capacity, nobody's allowed to come in, that's what it is, and it was just me and about 140 other people. Family's not allowed in because the auditorium was already full, the event apparently oversold. Game one goes to 
Golden State. The Warriors beat the Cavaliers in game one of the NBA Finals, 108-100. Game two of the best of seven series Sunday night. Geico weather, clouds, cooler temperatures in much of the state today. Jeff Scott, California News. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage. It's as American as apple pie. However, over the last seven years or so, Americans who can't use a tax return or pay stub to qualify have been shut out. Until now, Cash Call Mortgage is happy to announce its new 30-year fixed rate mortgage up to $3 million for good credit borrowers who can't or won't provide their tax returns or pay stubs. Your payment will never change. Until now, these programs have only been available as some kind of adjustable, and you know which way those adjustables will eventually go. So call 844-890-CASH for all of your 30-year fixed rate mortgage needs, purchase, or refinance. You can even pull up to $500,000 in equity out of your house for any reason whatsoever. Remember, that's 844-890-CASH to find out what today's 30-year fixed rate is with no tax returns. You'll be shocked at how low these rates are. Impact Mortgage Corp. DBA Cash Call Mortgage. Equal housing lender. Call 866-900-8744 for terms and restrictions. California Department of Business Oversight Residential Mortgage Lender Law License 4131083. NMLS 128231. Is something driving you crazy? Is someone driving you crazy? There's no one to listen to you? Sure there is. KCAA 1050 is here for you. When something's bugging you, call and rant at 909-353-1050. We know how it feels when you hold back those thoughts and it's not healthy to keep them inside. You need to get it out. So rant. Call us and you can rant about anything from your husband not putting down the toilet seat to the cost of food at the grocery store to local laws and regulations getting in your way. How about the road work on the freeways? Trying to stand between those white lines, but which white lines? It's so hard to tell. It's enough to drive you crazy. Oh, but that's my rant. We want to hear from you, and you need someone to listen, so it's your chance. Rant, 909-353-1050. Leave us your rant, and we'll either play it back, or we'll read it on the air if you don't want your voice on the radio. But whatever you do, don't hold on to those suppressed thoughts. Rant, rant, rant. Call 909-353-1050 and leave us your rant at the station that leaves no listener behind. KCAA 1050. Are you particular about the vitamins and supplements you take? Have you found that the big chain stores simply don't have what you need? Then you should know about the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. You'll find rock bottom prices on gourmet top quality vitamins and mineral supplements at the Vitamin Center. Get 30% off on all supplements and homeopathic products. All, not just selected merchandise. In addition, you'll find 30% off on all cosmetics, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste, makeup, hair coloring, and lip gloss. And all tea products are discounted 20%. Why go anywhere else? See for yourself at the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills, 5007 Canaan Road in Agora Hills, or check out the savings and place your order online, vitamincenteragorahills.com. Start saving by getting what you need from the Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. And tell a friend that the Vitamin Center ships nationwide. Call 818-707-0005. That's 818-707-0005. The Vitamin Center of Agora Hills. It's time for some delicious food at Pizza Dilly. Pizza Dilly Pizza in Colton, home of the famous two foot pizza with 32 slices of simply the best delicious Pizza Dilly mouth watering pizza. Pizza Dilly has all kinds of lunch specials Monday through Friday, starting at $3.99, all delicious. Stop by, refresh, refuel, have a cold drink, enjoy a tasty salad or a great specialty delicious sub sandwich, or simply delightful Pizza Dilly wings. Pizza Dilly is also People Dilly because your friends are all already there enjoying one of Pizza Dilly's giant screens, watching one of their favorite teams, and if you love the Dodgers, you'll love Pizza Dilly, your hometown Dodger station all year round. Come on in, enjoy a great pizza, enjoy Pizza Dilly, the real Dilly deal at 194 East Valley Boulevard in Colton or call 909-370-0242. Once again, that's 909-370-0242. Empire Talks Back. The attitude that, well, the little guy cannot win uh, seems to prevail despite the fact that over time we've seen that the little guy, if he is persistent, he becomes the big guy. Empire Talks Back. No, it's because maybe people figure out a little knowledge is like smoke. It leads to the fire. Empire Talks Back. I think this this drive for equality, this drive for justice, uh, is gathering steam as opposed to fading out. I think more and more people realize the importance of uh, the freedoms that America represents. 
Empire Talks Back with Wallace Allen and Friends, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. on AM 1050 KCAA. But now it seems like things are finally coming around. Help! I need somebody. Help! Not just anybody. Help! You know I need someone. Thank you for joining us, America. Colin and Carrie are with us in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, good. Hi, good. Welcome, welcome. So I see on my screen you're calling in to do your debt-free scream. That's right. Yeah. Congratulations. How much have you paid off? Uh, about fifty to $53,000. Very cool. And how long did that take you? Uh, 11 months. Making what kind of money during that time? Uh, Carrie, you want to say? About 120000 Great. What do you guys do for a living? I am a, um, I work in merchandising for a gross, corporate grocery chain mm -hmm. here on the East Coast. Okay. Uh, and I am an industrial and organizational psychologist for an automotive manufacturing company. Great. Very cool. Good for you guys. Great job. So what kind of debt was the 53000 Student loans, all student loans. All student loans. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So what happened 11 months ago that made you decide you could get out of debt and should get out of debt? Uh, well, we got married uh, right at the beginning of that, and we went through we went through our marital counseling, and they had us read Total Money Makeover. Ah, okay. Good pre-marriage counseling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. How old are you two? Uh 29, right around 29, Carrie doesn't want to say, right? Uh, I'm, I just turned 30. <laughs> congratulations. Okay, good. <laughs> Happy birthday. Cool. Well, good. And so the pre-marriage counseling, you, you got the book, and as you're uh, going through the engagement process, you start going, okay, when we get married, we're going to attack this. Were both of you on board with that instantaneously? <laughs> you want to say, Carrie? Yeah, pretty much. I It was my student loans that were there, so I... I had, there was a little bit more than that that I paid off us getting married, but not very fast at all. And, um, yeah, once we read through the book, we were both humble. Yeah, but I mean, you, you're making good money, and you guys really decided in your very first year of marriage to have no life to get this paid off looking at this math. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, did, we went out less than usual, yeah, that's for sure, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, how's it feel to be debt free? Good. Awesome. Very good. We're actually going to, on on Saturday, we're actually going to Mexico with some friends for vacation, so we're really excited about that. There you go. Now that you're out of this, you can do anything, right? Yeah, cool. sure. So what do you say the key to getting out of debt was? I mean, 11 months, you pay off 53000 making 120. What do you tell people the key to doing that is? Yeah, Carrie, what do you think? Well, it definitely teamwork between the two of us. We both had to decide what we were going to sacrifice in order to do that and agree. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that was the biggest thing for us. Do you have any good budget fights? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're not done yet either. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the biggest, what was the biggest worst the budget fight during the first year? Mm, that's a good question. We have, we have uh, like, each month we have, like, $125 we can each spend. Mm -hmm. And it's always, like, should we put that up or down or is it always going to be the same, I think, probably. It's one of the funniest ones. Okay. So, you know, when one of you has got something you want to do, the other one's holding them back. Yeah. 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 That'll do it. That'll do it. Very good. Well, good for you, too. Very well done. Congratulations. All right, Colin and Carrie, 11 months married and 11 months later, debt free. $53,000 paid off during that time, making 120. Count it down. Let's hear a great debt free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt free. <laughs> Way to go. Good job, you two. Very well done. Yeah, that was awesome, guys. Thank you. Very fun. All right, JR is with us in Atlanta. Hey, JR, how are you? Hi there, Dave. Doing well. Hope you are. Better than I deserve. How can I help? 
Well, we're selling my wife's house at a loss uh, by the time you roll commission and closing costs and the uh, mortgage balance. It'd be about $14,000. Now, thank God we have no debt on us, and we actually have a good savings in the bank uh, Mm -hmm. to the tune of about $28,000. So the question I have for you and I, I got some complications factors, but here's here's the straightforward question. Go ahead and just pay the 14000 out of our uh, savings account, or since we have a baby coming in November, do we take out a little personal loan to kind of hold off on that uh, that risk? By adding the risk of the loan. Well, <laughs> it's, either pay the four, yeah, it's either take the 14000 out of half our savings or pay, make 200 bucks a month on a loan. Yeah, I got it. But you add the risk of having debt. Yeah, that's, that's what true. you're missing. That's yeah. True. Okay. The, no, I'd, yeah, pay, I'd pay for it. I'd just write a check. Yeah. You got fourteen thousand left, and you got a baby coming in November. You got time to save plenty of money, and you don't have any debt at that point. Yes, sir. And so twenty eight minus fourteen is fourteen, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your household income? Uh, after we move and take a new job, we'll be making seventy five thousand a year. Excellent. Okay. So you said you're. Did I hear you say you're selling your wife's house? So this is like from another marriage or something? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. We each bought uh, a house before we met each other. Okay. And so I turned mine into an investment property. It's been carrying the mortgage with the profit. But uh, ever since she left South Carolina, mm-hmm. they've added a nice 2% uh, out of state tax to it. Mm. And so now it's going to outstrip the profit. So we don't want to, you know, keep paying on something that's going to be losing money. Okay. So you're debt free except your home and your rental home at, this, at that point then? That is correct, sir. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I would write a check. I'd be debt free, and uh, I wouldn't borrow uh, a loan now, uh, because you got fourteen thousand. You make good money. You'll be able to add back. You don't have the negative drain of this house on you anymore on your budget, and you you got plenty of time between now and November to build up a really really good, fancy, nice emergency fund with a baby on the way. Congratulations! Thanks for the call. Meg is with us in Denver. Hey, Meg, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, sir. It's it's an honor to speak with you today. You too. What's up? Um, so my husband um, took a leap of faith about a year, a year or so ago, and he started his own company. Um, and we're very blessed that he's doing really, really well. Um, what's happening now, though, is that we're, we're getting very busy. I also work outside of the home, and the the home is just kind of falling to the side, and, and I feel like my children are kind of being um, getting the second hand. And so I'm just wondering, is it too much pressure in the first year um, for me to kind of go home, I guess, to stay at home. We're struggling with the decision on whether or not we should take that leap and, and yeah. get me at home. Okay, and you want to be at, and you want to be at home. Yes, I do. That okay, what do you make now? Desire, but I just one hundred and ten thousand. You make one hundred and ten. Yes, sir. That's and, the other thing. Is yeah. I feel like I have such a great job, and yeah. um, that's a little harder to walk away young. from. Yeah. And what does he make? Yeah. Um, last year, he was able to gross 200 before taxes, and that was um, only Ta- taxable nine in- months. Now, what's his taxable income? It, it was 200. Oh, well, 200,000. Taxable, they, would, they reduced that down um, a ways, but, but what we calculated, yeah, was 200. Yeah. He was able to walk away with 150 even after taxes. Mm-hmm. Can you all live on 150? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. I would hope. He could, and, and he's expecting to do more. He's growing mm-hmm. right now. And and what what kind of a business is he in? Construction. Great. Concrete construction. Mm-hmm. And uh, what uh, uh, what kind of uh, career field are you in? Finance. Be a little more specific. Um, I kind of don't want to. <laughs> okay. Are you in so, banking, um, or are you a financial analyst, or? Yes. Yes, like that. Okay, so what I'm trying to determine is not just to get into your business, but what I'm trying to determine is how re-employable you are if his concrete business goes south. Uh, very. I would feel that. I feel that my skills would be very. Okay, so you, you could you could be at home and and, and keep back. stay keep your skills sharp and stay on top of the business yes, side sir. of what you're doing enough that you could walk back in and yes, pick something sir. up easily, fairly easily if something yes. happened to his deal. Yeah, I'd quit. Really? Yeah, I would. Even though it's just a year, it's yeah, I would. So fresh. I'm just afraid to put too much pressure. On well, you can go back to work if it falls apart. Right. You can go back to work if it falls right. apart, and he can go get something else if it falls apart. There is, hey, security's an illusion when someone else is writing your check anyway. 
So right. security's only is your only secure is your ability to go in the marketplace and do something again. And both of you have that security. I quit. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. Miss one of your favorite shows? Don't worry, we've got your radio DVR right here on KCAARadio.com. Log on and listen to any show you want, anytime you want, on KCAA 1050 AM. One of the most overlooked priorities in a family's financial plan is life insurance. Having it and having the right amount are crucial. If you died, how would your family pay the bills, put food on the table, and plan for the future? Term life insurance is protection for the ones you love. It's not complicated and it's not expensive. People need to deal with this, which is why I found a company I trust and I do business with, Xander. Please take the time to take care of your family. This is KCAA. What have I learned so far? I've learned that there is no one path right for everyone. I've learned that without my high school diploma, I can only do so much. My options were limited. I found a free personalized learning program with Learn for Life that has a flexible schedule so I could keep my job while earning my high school diploma. I found new career training opportunities that would jumpstart my future. What have I learned so far? I've learned that I can change my life. Are you 14 to 19 years old and looking for a free high school diploma program with flexible meeting times? This program allows you to keep your job or important family responsibilities while earning your high school diploma. If you've fallen behind on credits or dropped out of school completely, get back on track with free tutoring, a caring faculty, and one-on-one attention. For more information on how to reach your graduation goal, visit learnforlife.org. That's L-E-A-R-N, the number four, L-I-F-E dot O-R-G. Or in Roll today by calling 877-360-LEARN. That's 877-360-LEARN. Like to spend a few days in another world? Then write this down. Golden Bear Cottages, Big Bear Lake. Now, listen, this is not some corporate-owned operation. It's family-owned and operated by some real nice people. Unique? Oh, you bet. Golden Bear Cottages features 28 one-of-a-kind cabins on a five-acre historic site. Great for families, couples, and groups. And cabins are available with one to seven bedrooms. Golden Bear Cottages is just a stone throw from Big Bear Lake and super close to three great ski areas. Now, I could go on all day about Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear, but to see everything, just go to goldenbear.net. Again, goldenbear.net. Golden Bear Cottages in Big Bear. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Check them out. Goldenbear.net. If you're like most, your trust in traditional financial advice has taken a big hit in the last few years. So when it comes to your money, investment, and retirement planning, where do you turn now? Who do you listen to? Join us for Smart Money Talk Radio Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m. for the refreshing, straightforward money and investment strategies of Jim and Lorraine Conaway. With over 44 years of combined experience, the Conaways are here to educate you on how to be smart with your money. Securities offered through J.P. Turner and Company, LLC. Do you need some summer reading options? Well, you need to check out our $10 sale. This is the absolute best time of year to buy our books. Yeah, $10. Get this. You can pick up any of our best-selling books like The Total Money Makeover, Entree Leadership, The Legacy Journey, Smart Money, Smart Kids, Start, Quitter. They're all there for $10 each. That's a deal. And tons of DVDs and envelope budgeting systems, also $10. Check it all out at DaveRamsey.com or call customer care. They'll help you at 888-22-PEACE, 888-227-3223. 
888-227-3223. Kyle is with us in Denver, or Nathan is, I'm sorry. Hi, Den Nathan, how are you? I'm good, thank you, sir. Sure, what's up? Um, okay, I'm going to try to cut it all short. About a year ago, my wife passed away, mm. so I have two little kids. Uh, I am a truck driver. Uh, I'm not debt-free. I have about 50000 in debt right now. What kind of debt? I'm pretty uh, automotive and credit cards. Okay. How much do you owe on the cars? Um, 32 Okay. Of the 50 and Of the 50 yeah. yeah. And then credit cards and uh, some personal... One a personal student loan, family, and then uh, a second one is to the funeral home still. Mm. What do you make a year? So, uh, well, right now, I net about a thousand a week. Okay, so about fifty two a year. Okay, that's net, not gross. But um, so here's my conundrum: uh, I drive a truck, so I can work. I work hard. I make that net right now about a thousand a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at buying a truck, uh, $80,000 truck, uh, so that would put me further into debt. But with that 80000 debt, I could then see profits in the neighborhood of four to 6000 a week. Not true. Well, that, that would just be the gross numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd still have to make all the payments out of mm -hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to do all of this and break even is what you're going to do. Uh, I know the trucking business, man. I mean, I'm not an okay. expert on it, but I work with a lot of truckers over the years. And um, What I'd like to do is be able to, in a couple of years, I mean, the loan's looking at a four-year loan, so in yeah. four years I'll finally be able to make some money beyond mm -hmm. the 1000 a week that I make now. Yeah. I am I know this is your plan, but i I got to tell you, if you know, you're my best friend and we sat down over coffee, I'd try to talk you out of it. You don't need eighty thousand dollars in debt to start a small business, and basically that's what you're doing. You're opening a small business. You're going in the trucking business, and um, and, and that's what you do when you buy a rig. You're self-employed, and you have to get right. the you know you have to line up the, the loads, and you have to pay the taxes, and you have to pay the repairs, and you have to pay the tow bill when it goes down, and you and 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 and. And it doesn't work out like you think it's going to exactly. Uh, if you know, if your dream is to own and operate a rig, uh, I would sell your cars, and uh, that gets rid of a whole bunch of debt, like well over half your debt. Get you about a thousand dollar beater to get around in. Get rid of the thirty two thousand dollars worth of vehicle debt that you've got, and. Um, then I'm going to roll up my sleeves and get the rest of this paid off as soon as possible. And then I would save up and pay cash for about a $20,000 rig, not an $80,000 rig, and get started that way and never be in debt. Because, man, let me tell you what's going to happen. When you have those debt payments facing you, you're going to take loads you shouldn't take. You ask anybody in the trucking business, they'll tell you that's what's going to happen. When that, when that bear is chasing you down the hallway called payments on 80 thousand dollars you will start taking gigs you shouldn't take just to make the cash flow and you really won't be making a profit and you'll start spinning your wheels even more no pun intended okay so i'm just please don't go eighty thousand dollars in debt to open your own business please don't do that it's not going to be the blessing that you have figured out in your head that it is uh now i do want you to go if you want to own a trucking company i do want you to do that let's have a plan to do that but let's execute that over the next few years and, um, uh, uh, you know, in the meantime, try to figure out some other things you can do to make better income or more income or whatever and certainly get rid of these debts as fast as possible. Because if you got no payments and you have a paid-for cheaper rig, even if it breaks down, you come out way ahead. I mean, you have no house right. payments. I mean, you got no car payments. The student loans paid off. The family loans paid off. Can you imagine how there's no stress then? Yeah. Breathe that in, and breathe in the, that you're driving down the road in a rig you paid cash for, even if it's a $25,000 rig, and it took you a few years to get there. It changes the whole equation. All of a sudden, you start making smarter decisions about the loads you take because you don't have to take something. You're not desperate. Because every time I get desperate, Nathan, I get stupid. And, okay. and so uh, th this is me trying to talk you out of it. I, I am not saying don't live your dream. I am saying don't live a nightmare. And how you live your dream keeps it from becoming a nightmare. So that's how I would approach this. Now, uh, how long ago did your wife pass? 
Uh, about eight months ago. I'm so sorry. What happened? Uh, cancer. Oh. How old was she? 34. Oh, my goodness. And how old are your babies? Uh, four, well, almost four, almost eight. Oh, man. Wow. You got your so, hands full. You got your hands I full. I do. I do. And I'm trying to figure out what I can do yeah. to I, I, provide I, a better life I, for them. I want the you to. I, I, and I'm with you. I'm on your team. I'm not against you. Believe me. And once I hear that part of the story, it makes me more on your team. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to uh, uh, Financial Peace University, which is our nine-week class. I'm going to pay for it. Okay? Okay. So you can learn how to handle money. And then we just n announced yesterday the SMART conference is coming to Denver in the fall. And the um, I'm looking, looking, looking. What is the dates on that? October seventeenth or twenty fourth, one of the two. Okay, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be in Denver and we're gonna be in Phoenix, October the seventeenth and the twenty fourth, and doing the all day smart conference on a Saturday. Uh, can you get somebody to watch the kiddos if I give you free tickets to that? I hope so. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple tickets. Bring a friend with you, and uh, maybe you can get a, a relative or somebody to help you with uh, with them to get you into the uh, into the smart conference all day. Because what that'll do is we can pour some back into your gas tank. Because emotionally, you've just been through the ringer, and uh, not only uh, are are you grieving, but you're also alone to take care of all this stuff, and it's coming at you like. You know, like like bees out of a dadgum beehive, right? I mean, it's coming at you fast, and it's hard to make decisions in the middle of that. And you're just you're grabbing at stuff, and I don't blame you. I I I think you're you're a good man, and you're trying to man up and work your way through this. And so I'm going to help you. I want you to go through Financial Peace University. I want you to go to the Smart Conference. I'm going to pay for both, and hopefully we can put some fuel in your tank and give you a, a framework for making these decisions, and, and we can be a part of you turning this completely around. Okay. I appreciate that. All right, man. You hold on, and uh, Kelly will pick up. We'll get you smart conference tickets to Kelly, as well as Financial Peace University, uh, and that's for him in Denver. Is that the 24th or the 17th of October? I can't remember. It's one of those two. Either way, the one's one weekend, one's the other weekend. So that that's what we need to do. Yeah, James, when you redo this live event sheet, just make sure you put those smart conferences on there because I can't remember my name sometimes when I'm on the air. Okay. Open phones at 888-825-5225. 34. Wow. That's real, y'all. That's real. That just happened right here on the radio. Um, that reminds you to uh, do smart stuff and to get your, you know, there's an old saying when somebody's sick, get your affairs in order. Uh, let me help you with this. You don't need to be sick to get your affairs in order. You need to take that call right there as your inspiration to get your affairs in order. You need to get your act together. Everybody's walking along acting like you got, you know, I got I got 10 years to be stupid, and then I'll be smart for 20. Why don't you just start being smart now, all of you, and just take that as your inspiration. Me too. Me too. But um, you got to live your life in such a way that your affairs are always in order. There you go. That's a good way of saying it. Man. Ouch. Uh, puts this hour of the Dave Ramsey Show in the books. Our thanks to James Childs, our producer. Blake Thompson's our executive producer. Kelly Daniel is our associate producer and phone screener. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, and we'll be back. You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Tom Busby 